errors in a statistical test. Before you watch this video, I would suggest you to watch two videos in under the OpenEducator.com under the design of experiment, the p-value and the uh, level of significance and hypothesis testing. I will post this error in a statistical test video right after the second video. So let explain that. What is a statistical uh, errors in a statistical test? Now. All these statistical tests or hypothesis testing or design of experiment, um, any data analysis, the decision is based on probability and the final decision is some kind of yes or no. For example, uh, am I going to get the jackpot or not or um, are you going to come to the class today or not or are you going to invest in a stock or not. So. All the decisions are between yes or no, uh, whether it's going to rain or not. So you, you calculate this probability based on the data, and then your according to your set criteria, you say, well, yeah, we're going to invest on this or not. So you it, when you make decision two, either you accept or reject, then you are basically taking one side based on probability. Now, there is always a chance that the other thing might happen. In that case, you are making, an is making, an, making a mistake. Now, let me give you two extreme examples. One is winning a jackpot, winning a gambling uh, situation. So you're making a hypothesis that I'm going to win in a gambling situation. I'm going to hit the jackpot or something like that. And then you collect the data, and obviously you'll find out that the probability is very, very low and then you reject the null hypothesis of winning the jackpot or winning the lottery. Now, you reject it. However, tomorrow on the newspaper, you will see someone really hit the jackpot or won some kind of lottery. So that is a mistake that we did based on the data scientific study that we have done and the mistake was because of our system, because of our method. So this um, type 1 and type 2 error, they're basically because of our system, because of our process, we made some kind of wrong decision. And if we we know that the type, the hypothesis was true, someone won the jackpot, and then, and then we concluded based on our data, no, we reject that nobody's gonna that person is not gonna win the jackpot or something so however in reality it was true hypothesis and then we rejected it so that was a some kind of error now type 2 um, error is um, let me give you an example I use this example all the time um, I think I have used it in two three other videos the weather.com data so this morning when I started from home I saw cloudy and windy day, so I thought there might be rain, so I make a hypothesis that it's going to rain today. And then I see this weather.com data, and then they have run some analysis in the background and give me this probability of 15% rain. So that confirms my hypothesis. I say, yes, I'll accept the hypothesis because the probability is more than 5%, so I accepted it. Believe me or not. I didn't see a single drop of rain today. I have a really big window in my office and not a single drop of rain. So it didn't rain today. So the hypothesis is wrong and I accepted it based on my data, based on my process or method. And then I found out it was a mistake. So that's the type 2 error. Now both type 1 and type 2, they are methodological, theoretical mistake. And either way, you accept it or reject it, there will be some level of mistake. And that's why we call this theoretical or methodical error in a statistical test. Now there are two other types of bunch of other types of error too. Type 3 error, for example. Um, let's discuss about that. You probably have not seen this in your introductory stat class, but there are type 3, type 4 error, things like that. What is type 3 error? 
Uh, let me give you an example uh, before we talk about this. Um, think about someone is interested to run a test on um, the bicycle riding speed um, in two groups. One group's wearing helmet, another group is not wearing helmet. So that's the research question. Now, before that, the question is, do you really want to test that? Do you really want to promote that uh, riding bicycle without helmet? So in this kind of situation, the research question is not appropriate. Now, I don't care or people don't care what you get from that study. Um, it's an inappropriate research question. Let me give you another example. A lot of time, a student of my class, one student will ask a question after a after an explanation that I give for one explaining one concept. Let's say I'm trying to explain a concept, and then um, after I finish explaining that, a student will ask a question, and he or she is asking some kind of yes or no answer. So the student has the concept framed in his or her mind that this is that. And then he or she is trying to confirm, uh, asking some kind of confirmation from me and asking some kind of yes or no question. And when the question comes, I say, oh, my God, that's not what I wanted to know for them. So instead of saying yes or no, I give um, the explanation in another way. And that clarifies their concept and they get the right, um, right concept in their brain. Now, if I would say yes or no at that point, what I clearly see the student has uh, wrong concept built in based on my discussion. There's nothing wrong with the student is how I explained and then how it got into their brain. So it was as an instructor, my fault, not failures that I was not able to communicate that clearly at the beginning. So, and then it kind of situation like this, I really don't want to say yes or no. So the, the question that a student asked was not I wouldn't say appropriate or wrong or right, but it doesn't have a yes or no answer like the thing we try to do in a statistical test right here in hypothesis testing. So I don't want to say yes or no to that question. So there are a lot of situations you may have a hypothesis that is not appropriate or that doesn't have a yes or no question, things like that. Let me give you another example. So as a researcher, when I was doing my PhD, um, I, I wrote four proposals and then all first three were rejected. I spent about two years on that. And then I worked on my fourth proposal. So all first three proposals, my advisors, my committee members, six committee members thought that that was not a were the question to investigate and they allow my fourth question which took me about two years to figure out um, so they thought okay that might be a worthy investigation now if you think about any statistical test or experiment you are trying to know something new you're not testing something that you know you're not testing newton laws of gravity or whatever laws of motion you are you want to know something uh, and you don't know the answer. So a lot of time, we as a researcher, you as a researcher, is some kind of a student. So uh, it is very easy to get some kind of hypothesis wrong or something like that. So it could have like type 3 and type 4 and on and on. I think this video is already getting long. So the important thing that I want to talk about is this is more theoretical discussion, this type 1, type 2, type 3 error. Um, than in actual practical application. I made this video because a student of mine requested me and a couple of other time I got this request. So, but in actual practical real world application, uh, I didn't have this video for, a, I've been teaching this DOE for a long time, statistics for a long time. So, uh, but I think we should know, we should know what it is. Um, so uh, you have some solid theoretical uh, background when you run any statistical test or things like that. It's not that you have to use it every single day, but we should know what we're doing here. So I hope they explain type one, type two, type three, all kinds of error like that. Sorry for that long video, almost.